API. Tidal is a two-dimensional material uh, in real and reciprocal spaces, complementary AFM and uh, read studies. Was it easy? Behind me. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Yu Xiang from um, the Department of Physics and Astronomy uh, from RPI. And the topic I'm going to talk about today is uh, two-dimensional materials in real and reciprocal spaces, complementary AFM and uh, real studies. And this is going to be the outline of my talk today. So to start with, let me introduce you uh, some background about the real space and the reciprocal space of a two-dimensional material. Uh, let's take graphene as an example. Um, the real space of graphene will be consisting of a network of carbon atoms, which forms this honeycomb structure. And for the uh, real spa reciprocal space of graphene, it will be consisting of a, a network of uh, reciprocal rods that sits on a hexagonal lattice. And uh, we describe the uh, real space and reciprocal space by using the real space vectors and the reciprocal space vectors. And uh, they are related together um, through this relationship. To characterize the real space of uh, uh, monolayer graphing, we choose atomic force microscopy because it gives us a direct measurement of the uh, surface morphology and uh, some um, feature dimensions. Uh, for the re reciprocal space, we use as mutual reflection high energy electron diffraction to uh, study structure and uh, other properties. The advantage of this technique is that it gives statistical average over a very large area um, of the sample surface, which is about um, centimeter, centimeter square. Um, for uh, what if we don't have a monolayer, but we have a multilayer material? Well, the uh, only difference is that uh, the reciprocal space will no longer be a uniform rod. Instead, it will become um, something shown in this figure. Uh, which will have some intensity oscillation along the KZ direction. And uh, this multilayer structure gives rise to this in periodic intensity oscillation. And from this intensity oscillation, we can calculate the lattice constant in the vertical direction. Here's the experiment setup of our uh, AFM system and the uh, real system. So our AFM system is the Park XC100 model, and uh, uh, our A rate setup um, is different from the conventional uh, rate setup in that uh, it ha has the capability of uh, rotating the sample during measurement. And the advantage of doing that is that we can uh, have us uh, have accessibility to a large volume of the uh, reciprocal space. And uh, in order to give you some uh, concrete examples, let me talk about uh, the complementary AFM and the real study of graphene. So those are the three uh, AFM, Im AFM images I took from three different uh, graphene samples. The first one is the commercial polycrystalline graphene. And the second one is our homegrown uh, single crystalline graphene that is transferred onto a silicon, silicon dioxide on silicon substrate. And the third one is the uh, single crystal graphene uh, ice grown on copper 101. We can clearly see that there are many features on those uh, graphene surfaces, uh, such as those uh, uh, green boundaries, those uh, uh, wavy features, which is graphene wrinkles and uh, uh, some bilayer graphene islands. But uh, purely based on those AFM images, they all look more or less similar. So 
or we cannot distinguish which one is polycrystalline and which one is uh, uh, single crystalline. So in order to do, in order to do that, uh, we look at uh, the rate diffraction patterns from um, each of the samples, which are shown in figure A, B, and C. So there are two important features uh, on the read patterns. One is that uh, in all of those read patterns, we've observed this continuous vertical streaks. The fact that uh, those streaks are continuous indicates that what we have are uh, monolayer materials instead of multilayer materials. And uh, the second feature is that uh, if you obse uh, observe carefully, you will find that uh, the streaks in figure C is the sharpest, while the one in figure A seems to be the most blur. And uh, in order to be more quantitative, we uh, measured the azimuthal scan for, for each of those three samples, which is shown in figure D, E, and uh, F. And uh, the full sub maximum of the peaks in uh, azimuthal scan uh, is closely related to the quality of this film, uh, where the, a smaller full sub maximum usually indicates that the quality of the film is better. So we can infer from um, those three uh, results that uh, the quality of the single crystalline graphene that is as grown on copper 101 is the best. But uh, um, we still have not answered the question how to distinguish which one is single crystalline and which one is polycrystalline. And in order to do that, we take one step, step further. We construct the uh, real two-dimensional reciprocal space mapping from those three samples. And a two-dimensional reciprocal space mapping is basically a horizontal slice of the uh, reciprocal space, which is constructed by uh, taking uh, 100 uh, read patterns at different azimuthal angles and then put them together. So what this reciprocal space mapping shows is the symmetry or the, the symmetry of this uh, uh, material. So uh, we can tell from this uh, uh, reciprocal space mapping that uh, the first sample seems to uh, be, uh, be more or less uniform with some weak 12-fold symmetry. So we can infer that this sample is mostly uh, polycrystalline, but with some uh, weak preferred orientation at uh, 0 degree and 30 degree. But uh, for uh, the one showing in figure B and C, we observed a clear uh, six-fold six symmetry, which is, uh, which is the case for a single crystalline graphene. So from this, so from those reciprocal space mappings, we can tell that uh, uh, the a sample corresponding to figure B and C are part, a single crystalline, while the one uh, corresponding to figure A is just the polycrystalline. And uh, uh, I also want to emphasize that uh, because the beam size of the rays system is uh, centimeter size, so what we actually measure is the wafer scale crystal orientation instead of just the local orientation. Um, next, I want to show you what, what more we can gain from AFM or re-study of the graphene surface. Uh, first of all, uh, we, can, uh, we found some uh, interesting features on the graphene uh, surface. Uh, this is an AFM image from the transferred single crystal graphene. And uh, uh, so we are wondering about uh, what are those uh, uh, features. So we uh, did nine scans across each of those features, which is shown on the uh, right-hand figure. And uh, we figured that the slope of each feature is only about uh, uh, 10 degree. And uh, this indicates that uh, uh, those are most likely wrinkles, which are intrinsic to graphene because the slope is uh, relatively small. 
And as a second example, I want to show you how we can determine the uh, lattice constant or interlayer spacing by looking at the read pattern. So uh, figure A and B are two read patterns that is taken from a uh, monolayer graphene and the multilayer graphene. So for mo mo monolayer graphene, the vertical streak is continuous, it's like uniform um, intensity. But for the multilayer graphene, we we will see that it's not continuous. And it, this is more clear when we do nine scan along the uh, center zero zero streak, which is shown in uh, the upper one and the fig uh, lower one in figure uh, in figure C. So by looking at those uh, nice profiles, we can immediately tell that the first one is monolayer and the second one is multilayer. And uh, to be more quantitative, uh, from the peak, uh, from the spacing between t the peaks in f in the lower figure of uh, figure C, we can actually calculate the interlayer spacing of our multilayer graphene sample, which is about uh, 3.27 angstrom, uh, very close to the bulk value of graphite, which is 3.35 angstrom. And uh, as a second example, I want to show you uh, our complementary study for uh, tungsten disenite on sapphire system, which is provided by our, by our collaborators from Penn State University. And uh, this is uh, AFM image from that sample. And uh, from this AFM image, we can uh, gain two important information. First, if we do a nine scan across uh, one of the flake, we can get the uh, step height or the interlayer spacing, which is about uh, uh, 6.1 angstrom. The second feature we can get is that uh, almost all the flakes on the surface seem to have the same orientation, either pointing to the left or to the right. And, uh, um, and uh, then we did the uh, uh, read measurement for this same sample. And uh, this figure A shows the read two-dimensional reciprocal space mapping for uh, the tungsten disenite sample on sapphire. And we observed this six-fold symmetry. And this verifies that uh, the uh, regular orientation of the constant disenite flake is not only true in this local region as indicated by AFM, but also true in the wafer scale size. And also uh, through the analysis of uh, the read two-dimensional reciprocal space mapping, we were also able to determine the epitaxial relationship between constant disenite and the sapphire substrate, which is, turns out to be a parallel epitaxy. And uh, to sum up, I'd like to give a, a comparison between these two techniques. Uh, so for AFM, we certainly can uh, do very well in terms of morphology and determine the step height. And for uh, symmetry and uh, epitaxial relationship, um, that is uh, is hard which depends on whether you could get a, a atomic resolution. But for, um, but in order to determine whether the sample is single crystalline or polycrystalline, um, well, AFM may not be able to do that. But uh, for read, um, we could not uh, obtain morphological information, but we can uh, get a step high symmetry, epitaxy relationship, and uh, determine uh, whether the sample is single crystalline or not. Two, and uh, those two techniques uh, are complementary to each other. And uh, when combined together, we can gain a better understanding of the two-dimensional materials. I'd like to thank my advisor, my group members, and my collaborators. And also thanks for the funding resources. And thank you for listening.
open for questions. Uh, you mean graphing? That's copper one on one. Um, that is one of the uh, things that we are looking for in this uh, graphing on copper system because uh, there's literature that reports um, you will form a uh, super lattice structure. Uh, we have looked at this sample using um, high resolution need to look, look for those super lattice structures, but we do not find the uh, peaks that correspond to a super lattice. We should be able to that's a way to tell using AFM whether it's single crystal or not. Yeah, but if you if could have uh, uh, atomic resolution, that would be uh, possible. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, thank uh, Yishu. <laughs>